when I was 16, I had this dream, this hope that one day I may get the chance to go and visit California, Nevada, Arizona, Utah, the desert states, and go on a road trip. Uh, but growing up in the East End of Glasgow, that seemed like another world away, and it literally was. But you know what? One day, and what if? I am a great believer that where you come from should never hold you back from where you hope to go. And I've always been open to trying mad things or different things. And it, it, I was laughing there at the introduction. They were saying, you know, he's got a one O level. That was actually a lie. I made that up to try and seem intelligent. <laughs> uh, but the, the thing for me is I did, I worked in a, a, a bingo hall when I was 14. I worked in a sports shop at 16. I was on a minesweepers at 19, and I was a prison officer at 21. Then at 27, I decided to give it all up and just try something different. And I remember talking to the guys in the jail and saying, you know what, I'm going to give this up. And I had recently discovered this hobby, photography, and it was becoming more, it was becoming an all-consuming passion. It's something I just love doing. So I said to the guys, you know, I'm going to give it up. And, and they were saying, like, you're crazy, you're mad, you know, what if it doesn't work out? What if you don't get a job? What if, what if? And I thought, but what if I don't do it? So anyway, cut a long story short, I returned to full educa a full-time education as a mature student at Edinburgh Napier University. Uh, and for the next three years, I studied photography. Thereafter, at 31, I graduated and I moved to London and started working for magazines like Vogue, GQ, Tattle, the usual. Then at 41, I lived a dream. I managed to get an apartment in New York. That's what I'd always wanted to do. And I actually booked this place and took the lease out and I hadn't even seen it. And thankfully, I had a partner who supports me in all these mad encounters and mad things I got up to. Uh, so I moved to New York. And after a couple of years, I started working with this one client called Anthropology. And in particular, a creative director called Trevor Lunn at the time, a brilliant guy. And I turned up the first morning to the studio and I was freaked. It created this really complicated set and it wasn't really what I do. So I said to them, why did you book me for this? And they turned around and said, well, we just saw this series you've done called The Buskers. This is The Buskers. And I starts laughing. I said, guys, I'm going to come clean. I made this portfolio 17 years ago, but I've just put it online. So, you know, it's the first time you've seen it. There and then we, we had a conversation and we changed everything. And it was a case of, well, let's just start shooting anthropology like The Buskers. So the, the images on the left is The Buskers, the image on the right is anthropology. And you get the gist of this. So you get the feeling of that. Anyway, a relationship developed, and I often wonder, what if I hadn't been honest and just went and done that job? Would that relationship have developed? The truth is none of us know, and how crazy is it to think about that? What often terrifies us? We don't know. It's bonkers. We don't know what we're scared of, but we're scared of it. Anyway. A relationship developed, and I would work with these guys more and more. And then one day they came to me and they said, David, we're about to launch this new brand. Uh, we inspire many, many people, but we want our audience to know who inspires us. And that guy wasn't available, so they got me. And <clears throat> I said, right, okay. And this is the thing that every artist wants to hear. But it also puts pressure on you. They said, we want you to do whatever you want to do. And you think, okay, great. Uh, and then you think, what do I want to do? And I thought about it, I thought, you know what I want to do? I want to go on a road trip with my daughter. And I'm going to start in California, Rachel. And we went on a 3,000 mile road trip. And at the end of that, I, I made a portfolio called In Search of Eustace. It was a father and daughter's road trip. And to this day, and probably for the rest of my life, it will be the most meaningful portfolio I'll ever make. Now, I want to rewind back a little bit here, and I want to go back to when I graduated. We were broke, we were living in Glasgow, and I had this interest in street entertainers, what we know as buskers, and I would see these guys and, and girls, you know, on the streets doing what they do, uh, and I thought, I want to make a portfolio on them. 
So I went and found an old warehouse in Glasgow and I painted and plastered the walls and I got it all ready and all I had to do was get a busker. I should show you, this is some of the snaps of behind the scenes. This isn't in search of Eustace, but this is the father and daughter phone snaps of each other. Anyway, I had made this studio and I had to get my first busker. And I remember standing in, in Glasgow city centre and there was this incredible guy across the street. And I'm not really quite a shy guy, but I went and took that first step and I thought, what if he says no? So I stepped back, I took another step, and I thought, what if I screw this up? I took another step, I took another step, and I thought, what if it costs too much? What if it doesn't work out? Everything was so negative. Now, I can't tell you why I was thinking that way, because I don't know if it was a fear of rejection, a fear of failure, or what it was, but there was hesitation that I normally had never embraced in my life. Thankfully, I did approach this guy and the rest became the buskers. But I often wonder, as I stood there hesitant, what if someone had whispered in my ear and said to me, if today you don't take this first step and make this portfolio, many, many years from now, when you're living in New York, a dream you can't imagine, someone's going to be so inspired by it, they're going to pay for you to live that dream you had a 16-year-old boy as a 16-year-old boy, except for you're going to go on this trip with your 16-year-old daughter who's not even born yet. This is a photograph of Rachel from that trip. I guess I would have ran across the street and thrown my arms around that guy and never let go. <laughs> That's the reality of it, as none of us know. But I do believe in, in the, the, you know, this is your time. You have limited time. I would like to leave you guys with two things today to think about. What do you hope to do? And when do you hope to start doing it? And secondly, if there's something you care, are passionate about, or love, something that becomes all-consuming that you really want to do, never allow what if in your life to become if only. Thank you.